Charlie Gaming, play to earn. Welcome to the Charlie Gaming channel. Today I'll introduce you to the survival game Mars 4. The game can be downloaded for free via the official website or via the Elixir Gaming platform on PC or Mac. In the future, the game will also be available on Epic Games. The game can be played without the need to own any NFT. If you are interested in purchasing NFTs, you can use the marketplace on the game's official site or the secondary marketplace OpenSea. The marketplace on the official site offers NFT land, vehicles, colonists, and much more. You can acquire these NFTs for Ethereum. OpenSea marketably offers for sale the so-called Carcanda Key NFTs. By buying these NFTs, you get various benefits such as a 60% discount on land purchases, whitelisting for all future events and more. Let's move on to the game itself. I should start by pointing out that the game is still in development and so far only offers basic game mechanics. The version I'm about to show you was downloaded using the Elixir platform. This version of the game is single player only, however in the future this game should have multiplayer as well. In the game menu, you will find the classic game launcher. Game settings. Here I must point out the relatively poor optimization for PC. According to the hardware requirements, the game is quite undemanding and I should have no problem playing it on maximum graphics settings. Unfortunately, to make the game playable, I had to lower the graphics settings to medium. Classic game shutdown. Down below, you can still find the icons with the switch to the NFT marketplace and the option to join the community discord channel. Before I launch the game, don't forget to like and click the subscribe button so you don't miss the next video. As the name suggests, the game is set on the planet Mars. The game begins with you crash landing on this planet. Unfortunately, that's the only thing you learn so far. Although the game offers a diary, it is empty and you don't really know what happened. I assume that in the future, the developers plan to incorporate some sort of story into the game. You have the choice of running a short tutorial that shows you the basic mechanics. After completing a few simple tasks, however, you won't get any more. There's actually no objective to the game, it's just about survival and probably colonizing Mars. Your biggest enemies are the lack of oxygen, the cold, and at the beginning, a severe lack of energy for your base. The game's interface is also not complicated. In the middle bottom, you will find basic stats about your character how much oxygen, temperature, lives, and energy you have left. There are also six windows that you can assign different equipment to so you can quickly switch between them. The last thing you will find here is a mini-map with the current temperature. On the top left, you'll also see a productivity score, which you increase as you expand your colony. When you click on the I button, a menu will open. On the left side of the menu, you will find information about you. As you mine, build, and craft things, you gain experience points and thus increase your level. With each new level, you get two skill points, which you can divide into five categories to increase your basic attributes. You can also equip your character with clothing to increase your base attributes. These outfits are only in NFT form for now, but I assume that in the future, it will be possible to produce these outfits as this mechanic is already available, it just doesn't include anything yet. You can also find inventory and crafting here. Crafting which can be found here contains only one item. Most of the items are made with different machines which I will show you later. If you switch to NFT, you will need to link your account using the link found here. This link will redirect you to the game's website, where you log in using one of the methods offered, and then just copy the code and paste it back into the game. If you own any NFTs, this will make them available in-game. The last item is productivity. Here the game will offer you a gift that will fly in a module when you reach a certain score. All of the items found here except the first three will produce faster than you reach the desired score. Therefore this mechanic is, in my opinion, unnecessary. In the tutorial, you get basic tools like a pickaxe or tablet for building a base as well as a basic fabricator for making equipment and machines for further development. In order to manufacture anything, you need to mine different materials. In this regard, the game offers seven basic raw materials. 
five of these raw materials can be mined from rocks with a pickaxe, and two raw materials can be dug out of the ground with a shovel. One of the things that spoils the impression of the survival genre is that if you mine a rock, it will reappear in the same place not long after. From this perspective, you have an infinite amount of resources at your disposal. All materials are needed to develop your colony. Some of the resources need to be further processed to get better materials and make better things or improve your base. You need to use a specific device to process them. All devices in the game have several versions. The better machines you have, the better advantages you get like more space, more things to make, etc. As I said at the beginning, one of the biggest difficulties you will encounter in the game is the lack of power. Small machines only require batteries, and although you have to recharge these batteries regularly, it's easier than with large machines that already require real electricity. You can get electricity here from several natural sources. These sources include sunshine, wind, and vibration. Solar energy is very useful, but only during the day. Unfortunately, solar power plants do not work at night. Wind and vibration power plants only work when the wind is blowing. You can also make something like a power bank in which you put conventional batteries. These batteries will automatically recharge when your power plants are running. And if it is not daytime and the wind is not blowing, you can use this collected electricity to run all your machines. You distribute the electricity around the base with cables, just like I have. Next, you need to sort out the oxygen. At the beginning, you get oxygen bottles that can be refilled with this device. This oxygen cylinder filling device is battery operated. Just insert an empty bottle and turn the device on, then wait until the bottle is filled. Also, if you build and upgrade the base enough, you will be able to make an oxygen generator. However, this generator runs on electricity and you have to build something like a transition room, similar to what I did. If you don't, the moment you open the door, the oxygen generator will shut down. You can also cosmetically modify the base. You can make various decorations, lamps, tables, and more. But this is only a cosmetic modification and there is no way to interact with these things. Cosmetic equipment can be made using a machine called the Synthetic Manufacturer. Each product requires a certain amount and type of material that you must have in your inventory in order to make the product. The production takes only a few seconds. When the product is made, you just need to put it into your inventory, ideally into the bottom rail. And then you just place it where you want it. The last need you need to address is temperature. During the day, you do not need to monitor this value, but at night the outside temperature is well below freezing and therefore you need to warm up. That's what the heater is for. There are two types of small battery powered underfloor heating, but they are not very efficient. It is better to build a wall heater that connects to the mains and when switched on will keep you warm enough. If you don't get warm, your screen will start to freeze, your visibility will deteriorate, but more importantly, your life will start to decline. Lives will start to replenish once you're warm again. This is another mechanic that I think spoils the feel of the survival genre. You can also replenish your lives by drinking water and possibly food. As for growing food, there is a problem so far. Mars is literally a dead planet and I couldn't find anything to plant anywhere. You can make an automated grow room, but in order to grow something in it, you need to meet three criteria. Water and oxygen aren't a problem, but then you need fertilizer. Fertilizer can be made using compost, which you can get by composting dead plants. And that's a major problem because I couldn't find plants anywhere. If you play the game, let me know in the comments if you have the same problem or have found a way to solve it. Building and upgrading your base is the only fun mechanic in the whole game so far. To build, you need to take in hand the tablet, which you get at the beginning of the game. Click on the second button on your mouse to open a menu that contains several building sections that you can build. All parts require a certain amount of material. To build, 
Just confirm and the selected part will be built immediately. To upgrade the base, you must use the structure modifying device, which you also get at the beginning of the game. As with the tablet, the second mouse button opens the menu of options. To upgrade, simply select upgrade and then just select the part you want to upgrade and simply upgrade. Again, you must have a sufficient amount of material to upgrade. You have to make the windows and doors on the fabricator. This is used to make all the useful equipment for the game. The production is the same as for cosmetic equipment. You must have a sufficient amount of specific materials and then you just put the fabricate and again wait a few seconds. You then put the manufactured items into the inventory and then place them in the location you want. You can upgrade each part of the building three times. In the case of the first upgrade, when you cover the walls, it has an effect on the oxygen generator. The other upgrades are cosmetic only. I'm sure you'll think of going for a walk on Mars thinking you'll find something. Personally, I've tried going in all directions pretty far, but except for an abandoned vehicle located north of the wreckage of your shuttle that, again, you can't interact with, there's nothing on the planet. The moment you move away from the crash site, even the rocks that can be mined for materials disappear. Personally, I think this is due to the single-player version of the game. The developers have plans to create a metaverse world with land that is already for sale, on which players will colonize this inhospitable planet together. The game resembles a lot of classic Web 2 games, and offers practically nothing revolutionary, but thanks to blockchain technology and NFT, it will offer players to actually own a piece of the planet Mars, even if only in a virtual world. I believe that the current shortcomings will be fixed in time and the game will join other successful blockchain games on the market. That's all from today's tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it and thank you for watching it to the end.